Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you guys with me. Today we are going to be working on my 2010 uh, S3 8P um, Audi. So basically it still has the CDL engine, the TFSI, um, the semi-forged engine, the strong one. Um, and we are basically going to be R32 swapping it. Um, I am a big fan of the VR6 platform and um, I have had the TFSR previously in the Mark 5 GTI and um, yeah this car has basic mods, a tune, intake, downpipe, full 76 millimeter exhaust and uh, yeah I'm basically uh, moving on to a different platform instead of swapping out cars I was going to look at getting the RS3 version of this but why do that when you can put a R32 in it so that is the plan um, this car does have 300,000 kilometers on it so it is it is about the time where I decide either to build the motor or you know do something else with the car and this is the this is the route forward so let's get cracking we're gonna pull out this engine and start planning let's do it So inside this mangle of piping and wires is one little sensor. I'd love to know the genius person that decided to put your oil pressure sensor there. Why? Please tell me why. and seek go to Audi VW because they are clearly trying to make this as difficult as possible. the down part. So yeah, we'll do that quickly. And then I noticed there is a KTM logo on my oil cooler. No wonder I have, well no wonder TFSRs have oil pressure issues. Right, so after much debate, 
and um, swear words. We have the downpipe out to loosen the prop shaft. Uh, in hindsight, I should have taken the O2 sensor off, but um, yeah, we're here now. And um, some more genius hide and seek designs. On to the next piece. So we've got the drive shafts out, prop shafts loose, um, downpipe is off, all the wiring is off. So we're going to loosen the lower gearbox mount now, put the engine crane on, loosen the two top ones, uh, engine mount, gearbox mount, and then check what I didn't loosen when I start pulling the engine out to test the tensile strength. Always do that when you're removing an engine. Make sure you've loosened everything, and then yeah, let's do it. One more quick pro tip: um, make sure your catch can isn't leaking before it gets covered and before your car gets covered in oil, uh, because then it makes it great to work on. Lovely. Lubricate the hands. How about Tom? This car was very angrily put together. Jeez. Get 
Try not lose the clip that you can't buy. Because you have to buy the whole new cylinder. Which I think I've just lost. Right guys, so the TFSI is out. So this is a manual car. Um, so with the A3 that comes with the R32 engine um, and majority of the R32 Golfs, um, it's DSG or automatic. So we will be looking at keeping it manual, um, checking maybe flywheel adapters, spacers, uh, adapter plate for the box, whatever we're gonna do. We're gonna get to that as soon as we have the R32 engine or R36, I'd much prefer the R36, but whatever we can get our hands on. So this CDL engine will be up for sale. This is going to try, take some of the load from buying a new engine. And um, there is a bunch of bits and bobs, pretty much brand new K04, GFB goods, and forge actuators and all sorts of stuff. So that'll be our marketplace. Keep an eye out for that. As far as the S3, um, we're gonna take it out the shop, park it in storage. Um, as soon as we've fitted and test fitted the uh, either R32 or R36, um, and happy with the mounts, happy with everything, um, we are turbocharging it, so that'll be great. We will then send the car off for paint, get everything cleaned up, straightened up, and then obviously pull the engine out, send it for paint, and then get it back and fit everything for the last time. So thank you so much guys for watching. Um, we will carry on with the W126 in the next episode. This content will come as it, as it uh, progresses. So thank you very much guys.